ladies, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new review. And today we've got a normal review and not all the other videos before, which are a little bit more show and tell and borrow mods and uh, short and stuff. I have no idea how long this will be, but it's an atomizer and it's from YG Creations from China and it is a high-end device. Um, you may know YG Creations from Mr. YG um, with the Asylum RTA and maybe with the Core RBA, which I will also review. And yeah, we're gonna have a look at the packaging. I think no, there is no QR code, anything else. This is a very nice presentation in a nice black box. And we have a lot of accessories. We've got the RTA and we've got another chamber and we've got a spare glass, which is a Pyrex glass, which is always good. We've got a um, drip tip head and we've got here a small carton with insane a lot of accessories. Another chamber, which we're gonna have a look later. And then we have screws. Really, these are all screws you might need ever. And I will put this away right now. And another um, trip to pads. These are essentially spare heads because we have a black which is included and a uh, peak, I guess, which is um, in the um, box. And here in this plastic bag, some spares. Um, yeah, this is a lot of stuff. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the key facts. So this is the Force RTA by YG Creations. Cost of it is around 175 euros. You can buy this directly from the Facebook group, directly from China. Of course, you have to pay shipping and customs and so on. And this is also listed by Web Store in France, which I know right now. I don't know if there are more resellers around the world. Web store here is uh, 173.44 euros and apparently when you're in Europe there's no custom fee but and not that much shipping fees instead of um, FedEx shipping by China which is in European countries around 35 US dollars. So we've got a 22 millimeter RTA, 35 in height. We have 316L stainless steel with a capacity of 4 ml. Um, the design or the technique or the inners is not completely new. This is, let's say, somehow influenced by flashy vapor somehow some others and uh, from the um, actual market atomizers which came out in recent time it's yeah kuma it's pick a tiny in this kind of area and this is not really different it it works like it it feels like it so this is similar um you have three chambers, two MTL chambers and one RDL chambers. You have these two Pyrex tanks. You have a bunch of airflow pins, um, 0.8 by 2, 0.9 by 2, 1.0 by 2, 2.0 and 2.3 millimeters by 2, always a pair. And then single 1.2, single 1.4, single 1.6 and a blind pin. And this is pretty much everything you may need if you are either in MTL or RDL. So the packaging content is really, really good. I just read here, we have the, the dripped pads are peak. They are either peak light brown or peak black. And we've got a spare bag with O-rings and post screws. Yeah, so what we actually gonna use, and I tried, I had two configurations, which I tried. It was the pair of 0.9s, which was 
really, really good. And I tried a single 1.2, which was also very, very good, and the single 1.4. The, <clears throat> the airflow pins itself are feeling wise a little bit tighter than expected. So if you are into a 1.2, uh, the 1.2 provided here is maybe a touch too tight. I ended up with using a blind pin and a single 1.4, which was for me very, very good. Okay, so this is this, this is this. We have to check out the different chambers because this is, in my opinion, a very important thing to check out. Um, first of all, what's the difference between MTL and RDL? MTL, we have two different ones, which I will show you later, but first the RDLs. So most important, the RDL has a large uh, um, juice flow holes. Um, these juice flow holes have, similar to other um here a short cutout in this direction when you can see this so here is a short cutout what makes the what makes it better choose flow and we've got a different chamber height um, between the small chamber MTL and the RDL the chamber height of the bigger chamber MTL is, I think, the same as the RDL. So here, um, it's by eyesight not easy to see. Um, you maybe can see the mirroring, but this is really highly polished, the mirroring of the hole for the airflow pin when you just try to see the mirroring. You can imagine that the height of the chamber is bigger on the RDL cap. Yeah, for me, um, the juice flow of the MTL cap was just fine. I had no issues uh, about it, but you have to check out a little bit the amount of cotton you are putting in. So then we're gonna have a um, closer look on the atomizer. It's a very nice finishing overall the quality looks absolutely exceptional absolutely exceptional you may um, see the design the cutout design here the cutouts here the cutout in there and the cutout here on the bottom side this is done i mean this design is equal to this design from the top and the bottom um, the quality overall is really, really good. Really good. It looks, it looks astonishing. Um, also, we have an engraving here. YG Creations. And we have this drip tip heads here with the threading. This threading is also very smooth very very smooth threading the o-rings are also right in the middle of tightness and softness very very good there is a very very small wobble but this is like nothing but the 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 softness here is yeah wow it's it's definitely wow also the design of the outside of the chimney is yeah very unique and nice here we have force here we have the yg creations logo and um, these cutouts here um the polishing wow it's it's definitely definitely wow when you want to open up the deck um you just have to wobble around a little bit um now the o-rings are dry and then the deck comes out and this also goes yeah, just by hand. Very, very good. Um, I also, maybe like you, um, you also watched the video of 
Mark Todd, I think. And he mentioned that when you wobble around this five, six times here, the deck goes out and he's a little bit worried about if that happens when you have it in, in your pocket. The interesting thing is that when you have this on a mod, just checking out which mod I'm going to use, my, my pink uh, Colossal, I, I just like this mod. When you put it on a mod and you try to open it, it's not... It's not loose. It's definitely not loose. It holds, it holds very well. Well, I mean, it's it's definitely more on the soft side than a, a fl fleshy vapor. That's for sure. But I have the feeling that it holds pretty well. One one just interesting key fact, and this is not really important, but this color of O-rings. I saw this color of O-rings only one time on an atomizer which was the Auguste Era MTL RTA. And that RTA was the worst I ever had in my hands. So this is just a little bit of triggering in my brain that this color of the O-rings reminds me of that disgusting atomizer. But here I have the feeling that the softness of the O-rings works very, very well. So now we have the chance to open up this a little bit more. The Pyrex glass is just held by O-rings, um, similar on the other atomizers like um, Picatinny or uh, Kuma. And also this putting the glass on, yeah, just feels right from the softness or tightness of the O-rings. There's also another O-ring here with the threadings and yeah, the design of the outer chimney just looks nice. The bore of the chimney is inner bore, yeah, 3.8 millimeters, which works pretty, pretty well in my opinion, because it's not too narrow. Um, in my opinion, you are losing throat hit when the inner bore is too narrow. I'm normally going in the direction of four millimeters, but here 3.8 also gives you a very good balance of throat hit and flavor, in my opinion. It's a pot, it's a bottom fill, and you can see that there's a huge space to fill that up. Now the chambers. I want to show you the um, two different MTL chambers. So we have the same small uh, juice flow holes, but the um, chamber height is just different. Here's a little bit of water inside. Um, yeah, and I think when you look towards the airflow pin holes, you just can see that here um, the chamber is a little bit bigger, more height. And that chamber worked for me much better. So the first I attempt I did here was my standard 30 gauge candle wire, five and a half wraps, 12 watts, and so on. And I had the smaller chamber and I had a little bit too much cotton inside and the liquid flow was not so brilliant. It just didn't work for me. There was flavor throated balance was just not good. And then I realized, oh, there are different sized chambers inside. I used the bigger one and I used uh, the same wire and I used less cotton and then everything was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It worked really, really good. We're going to have a little bit closer look here. We have a four post design, which is interesting. Phillips, Phillips screws. Very good Phillips screws, in my opinion. I like these uh, screw heads uh, a lot. And as you can see, we have some, yeah, coil check guides. This is uh, where you are placing your coil and this is where you're putting on the uh, cotton ends. Very simple, very simple. And the four post design, I mean, some of you might say, uh, why do I need four screws? Yeah. It depends how you want to put in, how where you want to have your legs of your coils and it also depends what kind of wire you like to do. When you're using some chumpy, uh, chunky, rowdy coils for RDL vaping, 
you might want to go on the outside of the um, screw heads with more plain thin wire you want to go to the inside it depends how big your coil is so you've got a lot of different options here and i think this is a good choice um clamps clamps are only on the outside of the screw heads there are no clamps on the inside doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me at all I'm absolutely fine like it is. Um, one thing I want to mention is, I don't know if you can see this, this screw here does not go in and out completely straight. This is, yeah, nuggling around a little bit. I mean, it does work. It does work, of course, but the other screws are a little bit more straightforward, just yeah, on this on this post side, this is also here nuggling around just a little bit, but nothing to worry. I just wanted to mention it. I have my standard um, 30 gauge candle wire, five and a half wraps, a 2.5 millimeter ID, and I put it in. On the inside, I want to have a small coil um, wrapping around this here, just slightly. And just um, putting on the screw slightly. I want to work with it a little bit more when this is done. Yeah, that works. Yeah, this, this is tight. And then I'm just knurling around cut my wire because this is the safest way to have absolutely no leftover from my wire and then just a little bit of glowing and then I want to have it a little this wire is very thin so I need to heat up the wire a little bit to make it smaller and afterwards I'm checking that all is fine. For the ideal position of your coil, just use the center and just use the coil guide helpers or um, cotton guide helpers thingies because yeah, maybe you can see it like this. Yeah, I think here you can see the position of the coil. So now I'm maybe a touch, a touch more at the bottom. So you can also press it slightly down to be in the exact center of your coil with your airflow pin. When you're putting in the airflow pin, I just, ah, I also wanted to mention that all these small baggies, they are all printed. What is inside, very, very good presentation in my opinion. And also these are not these standard cheap plastic bags. These are, these baggies are, yeah, a little bit, it's all done a little bit better. So, um, there is no marking on these pins, but I can see in this bag, the 1.2, the 1.6, the 1.4, though there is no problem to identify these screws and you just push them in, which we saw the first time, I think, on the Bishop RTA with these O-rings. The O-rings here on the airflow pins are also excellent really really good you can see with the airflow pins that we are quite close also check out the markings here that you know exactly where to put it on we are quite close to the to the coil i mean not too close but somehow yeah yeah not too far away you cannot change the angle of the pins you cannot change 
the distance to the coil. This, this is fixed, but in my opinion, that all works pretty, pretty well. Um, some cotton. So, let's see if I do it right this time with a good, good amount of cotton. I mean, the first attempt was just not good what I did, but then the next attempts were altogether pretty good. So, so this wire is pretty thin, so I have to to uh, check that I do not destroy my um, small spaced cotton now. Then my small scissors. You just cut this right to the cotton coil trick guides. And then I had the feeling that it makes sense to make it a little bit butterfly style and then to cut the top end and then to cut maybe, yeah, let's say 20% off approximately. And that should work now pretty well. So what's the deal here? I'm going to prime the cotton. We're going to fill the tank. And then we check out that the cotton is placed well. You do not to be exactly inside these, these clamps guides. Just see that it's just inside the screws and everything should work pretty, pretty well. You can put together tank and chamber. The um, screws are inside and, inside, and then we check out the markings. Yeah, and that's all. And that's all pretty, pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty um, quiet. Not not completely flashy vapor quiet, but it is pretty quiet. It's a good draw. Um, and when you have your uh, perfect cotton placement uh, and the amount of cotton and um, your airflow pin set up, then you will have a very good balance of throated and flavor. Very, very good. And you've got a very high endish RTA, small RTA, which looks good. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty fancy. Maybe for, for a few guys of you, this is maybe a little bit too much going on design wise, but it looks definitely very good. The drip tip um, is, yeah, for MTL, it's a little bit on the short side. I mean, maybe you, you want to change this to a little bit longer one, but it's working quite good. The vapor itself is not too warm. No, no, it is definitely not. And when I compare it to the, yeah, pick a tiny Kumas, um, yeah, flavor throated balance, yeah, I maybe I would rate it a touch higher. Maybe a touch higher when you 
want to go a little bit more in the direction of flavor and a little bit less throated, just change it to a pair of airflow pins, for example, the 0.9s. Yeah, it does the job exactly like it should do. Have to admit that right away. Um, all in all, this is, this is a pretty good atomizer. It does the job excellent. The machining quality is really excellent. So this is, this is on a very, very high level. I cannot say or, or I cannot tell you uh, this is a must have uh, to say um, I'm going to pay 175 euros for a made in China atomizer. This is a little bit difficult because um, I mean, we all know that there are um, thousands of atomizers made in China, which, which cost maybe around $20. Um, but of course, it's not, it's not the same quality. No, no, definitely not. So this is, this is not a mass production and this is on a very, very high level. Really, really good. Um, so yeah. I can recommend this one. It's a good looking RTA and a very high quality. Um, regarding the top cap, yes, I can wobble around so that my top cap goes off. But when I pull it just by standard here, it does not go off. Definitely not. Um, the top cap could be a little bit on the tighter side, definitely possible, but I think it's not an issue. I think it works pretty, pretty well. Yeah, so far, I think that's all to say. So thanks a lot for watching and bye-bye.